Hey, everybody, welcome to Thursdays with Rob and Paul. We got a very big announcement about a huge show and a chance for you to win a car. Plus, I go over some terrible holiday toys. We talk about how Super Mario has the best anti-drug message out there. Plus, my new movie, The Binge, is out right now, so check that out. And does the hammer have competition? All that and more on a brand new episode of Thursdays with Rob and Paul, but only Paul. And we have big, big announcements. I know we've been teasing BossCon for a long time, but I actually have a bigger announcement coming up, and I'm going to talk about that announcement in just one uh, one or two minutes. Uh, but all I'll say is this. Sorry that we've been delayed in doing the best Who's the Boss recap show on the internet. Uh, Rob and I have been working. Rob has been in Canada. Uh, I was working. I wasn't supposed to be here tonight, uh, but um, the movie I'm working on was shut down. They don't say why. It's COVID. But it was shut down. I don't have COVID. But uh, that allows me to be here tonight. Uh, I am here. And I am so excited to be here because there's a lot to talk about. Tonight at midnight, I have a brand new movie that premieres. I mean, I'm in it. I'm not necessarily the star of it. It's not like I'm Tom Cruise and this is my maverick. This is kind of like a fun side piece in a movie that I think is really funny. Uh, the movie is called The Binge 2. I'll tell you a little bit about that as well. But are you ready? I, I don't know if I should even get into this right now. I mean, there's so much I want to do. All right. Well, let me first just let's pop up on the screen what we're going to talk about here tonight because there are some big things. And the big thing that we want to talk about tonight is this. It's a Jack story. It's who's the boss. Uh, we're talking about a classic episode. This is one of the episodes that I think most people uh, think about when they think about who's the boss. Season five, episode five. This is when, um, you know, Angela works too hard and, you know, she should delegate more. But Mona, you know, is delighted when, you know, that workload is transferred to uh, recruiting Jack, a uh, very talented and charming creative director. Tony, however, is a little jealous of Jack and a little suspicious of him as well. But he changes his tune, Tony does, uh, when Jack spends all his days with Angela and becomes a regular home guest until late at night when Tony catches them about to bone. This is another fully sexual Who's the Boss episode. And here's the thing I'm realizing about Who's the Boss. Tony is a housekeeper, a maid, whatever you want to call it. Uh, he's, you know, he's a home consultant. And I think back in the eighties, this show was all about making sure that while Tony, uh, was doing a job that in the eighties was stereotypically a female job that he retained his masculinity. So he always, and the show always had to be about fucking. And I feel like that is the undercurrent of the show. As we've gotten deeper and deeper into the show, it feels like Tony always has to prove that he can go toe to -to toe sexually with anyone, even though he has a job that in the in the eighties was viewed as maybe something uh, that was a, a a job for a woman, which I don't agree with, but that's what it is. You know, he's a manly he's a manly manny. Um, okay, so are you ready? Are you ready for the big news? December 15th, nope, December 16th, and December 17th, Rob Hubel and I, is that the right date, Molly? Okay, December 16th and December 17th, Rob and I are hosting a -a one-of-a-kind show on Twitch. This has been the announcement we've been talking about. On December 16th and December 17th, we are launching a brand new show. The show is called celebrity yard sale and what's going to happen is rob and i are going to be in the same location on a set in hollywood and we're going to be hosting a yard sale and our celebrity friends are going to come by and they are going to sell their stuff it could be a prop from a movie it could be something personal it could be anything at all and you get to keep it And you don't have to pay any money for it. No, no, no. It's about guessing the value of it. And whoever gets closest to the value of the item gets it shipped to them. And now I think probably the the thing I'm missing here, the big piece of this information, is that we're also giving away a brand new car. 
a Hyundai Tucson. Brand new for you, not a bit. Front page of Twitch for two days. Rob and I and Friendzone are going live to give you a Hyundai Tucson. Again, not a bit. This is real. This is big. This is going to be a star-studded event. I'll name some names of people that may or may not show up. We've got a lot of people. I'm talking to some people that you're going to love. People from Abbott Elementary. People from your favorite shows like Chippendales. People from the world of professional sports. Yeah, there might be, and we're working on it right now, a Los Angeles Clipper appearing on this show. We're going to also have some of your favorites. I mean, one of your favorites, one person who shows up in the most odd spots is going to be on this show. If you're a fan of How Did This Get Made, you're going to maybe have two very special guests appearing in different ways on this show. It is going to be for two hours on Friday and two hours on Sunday. It is going to be four, it's going to be six to eight p.m. Pacific time on Friday. And it is going to be 4 to 6 p.m. on Saturday. That's right, Molly, right? Yep, okay. Uh, So, 6 to 8 Pacific time on Friday. And then 4 to 6 Pacific time on Saturday. You can enter to get a brand new car. That is it. Uh, And like you said, yeah, professional sports. It's impossible. It, it, like, let me tell you. Oh, hold on. Oh, Jesus. So, it's going too fast. It's going too fast. Honestly, it is. Let me tell you about something. Actors, they have agents. Uh, you can get to them in a normal way. These sports stars, to get to a sports star is like navigating the most... They're, well, I know a guy who knows a guy. Yes, they have agents, but they're like, well, they're not doing that. Is that a Nike colorway you're getting? No. All right, so we're... We, I've pulled a lot of strings. Molly has pulled a lot of strings. Are we excited about this? This is a brand. This is a, no one knows about this yet. We can't even really announce it yet. Ads are going to start popping up. I was actually on Jerry O'Connell's show, The Talk, to talk about this very specific event. Um, But you can get yourself a Hyundai Tucson. You just enter to win. And I'm also going to give away a really cool prize. If any of you are, I shouldn't even be telling you this. I don't know if I should be telling you this. If any of you are fans of podcasting and Earwolf, um, there is a legendary table at the Earwolf offices. It is a table that's been signed by every guest who's come in to Earwolf. And I'm giving that away. You got to guess the value of it. And whoever's closest will get it. But we're giving that away. This is not like nothing. When I talked to somebody, they told me, oh, I'm bringing a prop from a show. A show that's been on the air for over 12 years. They're pulling a prop from the set. Uh, Wow, there is so much. uh, Wow, there's so much uh, chatting going on in here. Um, All right. So uh, that's what I wanted to tell, tell you all. December 16th and 17th. Celebrity Yard Sale hosted by Rob Hubel and myself with very special guests. A two-day event, two hours each day. You'll have a chance to win so much cool shit and a brand new Hyundai Tucson. That's what we've been sitting on for a long, long time. I hope it was worth it. I think it's going to be awesome. We've built the set. This is the first time that Rob and I have been in the same location together. Molly is producing this. So that is... That's what we got. All right, now let's get into the actual show. Um, we here at Friend Zone love the hammer. We've talked about the hammer at length. The hammer is a lawyer in Texas who uh, basically does all sorts of settlements for you. He has a hammer. He wields a hammer. And let me tell you, this guy, you don't want to mess with this guy. And then all of a sudden, Someone said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Jim Adler, the hammer, has got nothing on the hammer from Kentucky. So let me show you a little clip of the hammer from Kentucky. Take a look. After I was hurt in my car wreck, I needed help. I knew I had to call Daryl Isaac. Boom. 
boom, she gets the hammer. Just the hammer like means Thor. You're getting an attorney will put your needs first. The hammer means you're treated like family. The hammer got me six hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Boom. So if you're injured in a wreck, call the hammer today. So if you're in a wreck, call Daryl. Daryl Isaac, the hammer. Don't wait. Call 800-888-88. Now that's Daryl Isaacs. He's the hammer, right? And you know what? Daryl Isaacs is so confident in his hammer that he lets that hammer, like Thor, be shot into the hands of his victims you know, of the accident. And look, these are not just big rig accidents because we know Jim Adler only deals with big rigs. And I was like, okay, that's good. That's interesting, but it's not as great as Jim Adler. Oh, I was mistaken. Daryl Isaacs, the hammer, is going to blow your fucking mind people you're wearing shoes right now take them off because you're about to get your socks blown off and i don't want to wreck your shoes get ready for this daryl isaac's commercial the hammer has production values check it out Galaxy of Kentucky, the fight for justice continues. Hey, you T bone my cruiser. Oh, big insurance. Help me, Daryl Isaacs. You're my only hope. On my way. So, you've come for your small check. Hey, take it. Never. Daryl Isaacs is on his way. The hammer can't help you. It's hammer time. Uh, get him. Time to pay up. Uh, what? I quit. Uh, put me down. I tried to warn you. Whoa. Was that a horse? Thank you, what? Daryl Isaacs. May justice always be with you. And may the hammer always be on your side. Okay, Molly, stop it. We're going to play it a couple more times. Holy shit. Did you just see what I just saw? Daryl Isaacs did a full sci-fi film. I would argue that that film might be better than that last Star Wars film that came out. All right, that was a full one, two, three. All the acts were there for every movie. The plots, the dramas. Now, here's a couple of things. Daryl Isaacs is like, I deal with car accident cases but clearly is also like a giant Star Wars nerd because for him to put this in space, let, 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 let's watch it one more time. Go back here. Okay, here we go. The galaxy of Kentucky, the fight for justice continues. Hey, Pause it, Molly. On my <laughs> the galaxy of Kentucky, bold. All right, I love that this is where we're starting long time ago in a galaxy of Kentucky. Boom, and then we get... You T-bone my cruiser. I love it. But when this motherfucker comes on the screen, this alien speaking in an alien language, Molly, can you rewind this alien? Just, just watch what's going on here. And by the way, look, I think that Daryl Isaacs cast people to match his level of acting. It seems a little bit like, you know what? The pomp and circumstance here really elevates the entire thing. But all right. So you T-bone my cruiser. Check it out. You T-bone my cruiser. <laughs> Now, in my mind, that alien is going, go fuck yourself. I don't care. I don't have insurance. Now, that alien seems to be different than what we get into because that alien's in his own ship, T-boning. That, that alien's in his own ship, I guess, T-boning her cruiser. But then when we cut out to this, uh, we're in this ship, this giant ass ship. It seems like if that ship, this Death Star T-boned, she'd be dead. But take a look. Oh, big insurance. Okay, so I guess I guess what's happening is the Death Star is big insurance. Now that lawsuit that she has with that other alien, that's a di we're done with that story. That's the first act. We're done with that. We pop into Daryl Isaacs, who's rocking this Ferrari like cruiser. Just just getting it done. Just in space. Check him out. On my way. Pause. He has a hammer as an accelerator. The hammer is an accelerator. 
and it says hammer speed. He's going hammer speed to get to, he's just hanging out in space. Help me, Obi-Wan, you're my only hope. Help me, Hammer, you're my only hope. I love it. it we're, I'm following along. This is my Han Solo. This is my new Star Wars. I love everything about this. He hits hammer speed. He immediately is on the Death Star of big insurance. Take a look. On my way. So, you've come for your small check. Hey, take it. Never. Pause. All right. So, this woman is now abducted by big insurance. She's brought onto this ship. There's an alien passing out checks. And people are asking, do we need to know any lore about Daryl Isaacs? I think the horse foreshadowing will come into play i think the horse is something but i'm not positive all right so she's brought in as a prisoner of war to big insurance companies remember that alien right there that looks a little bit like short circuit remember short circuit that racist movie where the white guy plays an indian guy but the robot didn't do anything wrong we like we like johnny five johnny five is alive uh that robot is practical it seems like that robot is practical it doesn't seem like that's all cgi but we're in a cgi environment she's standing tall she's our ray what happens next take it never daryl isaacs is on his way the hammer can't help you pause why okay these guys know about the hammer and they're not afraid of him the hammer can't help this is the, the hammer's only villain is big insurance and they're putting her in a chokehold i love the metaphors that are going on here i mean this is a layered thing when i told you this is a full movie it is a full movie think about all the lawsuits he had to win to finance this move this i want to see the 90 minute version of it not any longer than 90. okay we don't even need it that's how good he is he can give you the whole thing all right check it out he comes in we don't know how he gets on board the ship but he's got his hammer and get ready he's got his mask too here we go it's hammer time. Pause. I do have a problem with the hammer time thing. It is hammer time, but look, I guess when you have, like, then I feel like now are you ripping off MC Hammer? You can't say it's hammer time. Maybe like it's like if you want to steal from the thing, you'd be like, it's clobbering time, it's hammering time. Again, we are talking about using a hammer to defeat people. We're using a hammer as a weapon. No matter what we're going to say here, the hammer is used to smash people. In this one, literally i mean this hammer is pretty awesome it's this futuristic hammer he's got that mask going on there i don't know what's going on under that mask i don't know why he's got a mask that's similar kind of guardians of the galaxy it's just on there i mean is it i didn't see him pop it in all right anyway let's go what wait they have briefcase swords when would they need that do they go to some sort of like watch that again briefcase swords why in like in what so i guess these robot stormtroopers are why not just carry swords first of all but now i guess they do try cases i mean if so i'm on board check it out pause now i don't We'll get into that in one second. Now, I don't, what I like about Daryl Isaacs is Daryl Isaacs is not hurting anybody. He's just basically using uh, the hammer to defend blows. He's knocking down the people who are coming after him. But then he attacks this poor little robot. That robot is just passing out checks. That robot isn't attacking with a sword. So now I'm starting to feel like Daryl Isaacs might be a bad dude because he is basically beating the shit out of a robot. But it's not just a robot. One more time. Uh oh. I quit. Pause. Uh, what? What? What in this world is going on? Okay, we understand in the world there. Oh, wow. Okay, in the world of uh, Star Wars, not like in that world, but in our world in which Star Wars was made, uh, clearly there are uh, people that can fit inside the suits of those machines because it's hard to, or especially in the 70s, it was hard to kind of have all the uh, manipulation that you want. But are we to believe that in this world, 
people are in the suits of robots as well and not just like re- he's in a full suit this man is in a full suit inside that robot so he is like a like he is like some sort of like legal pa or something who is inside like why not just have him be out in public but he a minute the minute his suit of armor or his robot suit of armor is done why does he just have a little small suit like everybody else like they why don't he just have that suit why do I have to put him inside a robot? But he quits. He realizes. I mean, that guy does realize. Like, you know what? I, I don't get paid enough for this. I'm already, I'm already compromising my morals by having to exist as a cute robot. And then we get this. Some real violence. We understand that Daryl Isaacs has the force. But I guess they also have the force. So this is very much like, I mean, everyone's, I mean, I guess he's Luke Skywalker in this. There is our guy. He's quitting. The horse is oddly floating in outer space. In an old school helmet, like a like a like a marine, like a a nautilus from a Jules Verne novel, the horse will have to find out the backstory. And believe me, we're not done with Daryl Isaacs. We'll come back to him after because Rob needs to see this as well. All right, uh, as somebody said, he may not have the force, but he's got the horse. I wish that was a line. And you should be writing for Daryl Isaacs. Check out the next part of this. Oh, I tried to warn you. Thank you, Daryl Isaacs. May justice always be with you. And may the hammer always be on your side. Freeze. He's waving to people from his spaceship. So he's flying low. That's a maverick move. I guess he throws them into a vault where there's more. He basically has just robbed the insurance company. What we're learning here is that Daryl Isaacs will commit a crime for you. I mean, he will defend you. But what he just did there is not legal. He basically... uh, just beat the shit out of three lawyers and then forced stole money it didn't seem like they gave that money willingly and it also what i love about this is like is the horse part of daryl isaac's thing or the or are are these characters just being like was i hit did i am i hurt so badly that i only that i see this horse or am i hurt do i have a concussion I, i the horse could be yoda it seems like I would have loved the horse to be in the glider. It doesn't. It seems like Daryl Isaacs and the horse work in separate entities. It's not like Chewbacca and Han Solo. This is a different kind of a vibe here. I, I the I mean, oh, maybe the horse is trying to hire him. Look, he'll work any case. Daryl Isaacs, holy shit, that blew my mind. Was that a horse in this galaxy? I guess they still have horses, or they call them horses. Uh, somebody brought this up that a uh, horse is equal to a cowboy, and uh, Daryl Isaacs is a space cowboy. Hey, that's true. I mean, he's also just a Jedi, and this is a completely of Star Wars. But yeah, I guess we could also say it's uh, we're talking about the old West. Uh, the horse is a metaphor for metaphors. Uh, it could be an alien that looks like a horse. It could be a lot of different things. Um, all right, so here's the deal. I'm just going to silence my phone here. Um, I guess in Kentucky space, we don't know. I would love to see him pop some bourbon before he hits hammer time. But holy shit. I don't think anyone can mess with Daryl Isaacs. I went on a deep dive with Molly today to look at these commercials. We got more Daryl Isaacs to get into. So Jim Adler, if if you're suing Daryl Isaacs just on content alone, what I guess what I would love to see is the production value of Daryl Isaacs with the energy of Jim Adler. Because Daryl Isaacs seems too much like a nice guy. Like, Jim Adler seems like he's going to die from lung cancer because he smoked too much goddamn cigarettes and daryl isaac's like hey i like life things are good i'm gonna hit you with this hammer now um but uh apparently robbing an insurance company is legal in space kentucky well you know what that's right that was like uh you know there's no rules in space kentucky what happens in space kentucky stays in space kentucky and look they were attacking him so i don't know space kentucky holy shit um all right people dang them cigarettes um so I want to make sure that we take care of our friend zone audience the best way possible on December 16th and 17th because we're going to have a ton of new people here. Uh, people are coming in. Molly is producing this. Uh, so she will recognize you all. We want to recognize you all. But the best way to get involved in this show, uh, there will be no dirty dealing. We can't give you the best way to get a car. You're going to put your name in a hat. We can't tell you the value of these prizes. But what I can tell you is this. That on the Discord, we are asking for your help. We are asking for you to uh, chip in, chime in, because what we can't do 
in this stream is what I just did. I can't play a Daryl Isaacs commercial. We've been told we can't do anything that uh, basically uh, we normally do on the show because it is uh, sponsored by the great people at Hyundai. And we want to make sure that the show is legally uh, the cleanest it can be, not as far as language, uh, but as far as not using any copyrighted material, et cetera, et cetera. So we are looking to you to volunteer some pictures, to do some, uh, maybe some attack ads for us. You can check out everything going on in Discord. Maybe we'll even make a special section for it in the Discord. Uh, but check out what's going on there to participate in the show. We'll make sure to credit you all in the show. Uh, but it's going to be big. It's going to be really, really big. And I didn't even tell you who we're co-hosting it with. Um, Eva Anderson, an amazing uh, actress, a comedian, a writer. You know her from her appearances on like shows like The Doughboys and How Did This Get Played. Uh, she will be joining us as our appraiser. Eva Anderson will be our appraiser extraordinaire. She will be dictating all the prices of the items that are out there. And there's very complicated systems that we're working on, very big Twitch things. Like I said, we're going to be on the front page of Twitch. There's going to be a lot of riffraff in here. But we're also stepping up our game, too. So um, this is, I mean, Hyundai is doing their version of Daryl Isaacs. I mean, we are the Daryl Isaacs of uh, Twitch. Molly, pop in if you can for a second. Rob is dead. But there's a new face on the scene. Yes, it's Molly time. Molly, <laughs> are you are you excited about the December sixteenth and seventeenth show? I am beyond thrilled. Next Friday and Saturday is going to be the best. I, I, I have no words. I'm so excited. I know we've been planning for months. Oh, months. But it, and oh boy, it is hard for me to keep my mouth closed. Oh, I just want to tell everybody all about it. It's going to be dope. Um, I did might be a musical performance. Might be maybe. Maybe. Well, I mean, you, if you'd like to, yeah, get in there. But I, I know that one person is definitely a musician. And what he is giving away, a lot of familiar faces and some new faces, too. Mm -hmm. Like some faces that we haven't had, some faces that we have had. Uh, it's going to be a real, a real mix. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, no dogs. Sorry, Birdie won't be there. But... I, I noticed, Paul, when you announced it today, well, and it's yeah. not even an announcement. We can't say it's an announcement. It's yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think it's an announcement. Everyone, shh, 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 shh. Um, everyone thought that it was a bit, that you're just pulling their I leg. know, I know. And I love that. It is so wild and cuckoo. It seems like a bit, but it is real. It is 100% real. As, as a matter of fact, I, I know, I, I, like, I, don't, I, didn't, I don't even want people to think like, Oh, okay. What? Oh, next week you're going to do some dumb bit. Like, oh, you didn't have the right things. It doesn't work. But I, this is how much I'm going to show you. It's not a bit. Um, I'm going to try to pull up uh, that email that we got. Wait, from... Don't get me wrong. There are going to be bits. Oh, there are going to be bits. The the giveaway is not a is not fake. The giveaway is a real. We are doing this with a real car company. Oh, just uh, to be clear, Hyundai did not say no dogs. I said no dogs. Okay. I got to be like present and with you guys. I And if I have this beautiful creature, I'm just going to be constantly staring at her and not doing my job. And I figure you guys want a car, right? I mean, I think so. I mean, Molly, do we have that? I'm trying to pull up one of the uh, the ads. You see them all loaded in the. Oh, are they? Oh, yeah, okay, great. You want. All right, let's do uh, let's do this one. I'm going to play it right here. Okay, okay. so check it out. If you don't believe us, why would we do this? We're going to film a commercial where we say we're giving away a Hyundai on Twitch. Well, we can't unless. Is this a commercial? Are we in the commercial? Oh my God. Are we filming it? This is so meta. Are you serious? Is this a camera? <laughs> this is like being on a prank show. Oh my gosh. But the prank is you get a free car. Celebrity yard sale. Tune in for your chance to win a 2023 Hyundai Tucson. Yeah. See, Molly, you were right. People did not believe it was a bit. There's multiple commercials. I mean, multiple ones like, uh, like this one. Here we go. Okay, Paul. Time to say goodbye to the car. We got to give it away to somebody. Like today? Well, I mean, that's the whole point of the, the show. We're giving end. away a car. In a yeah. little bit. Really got to give it away. I mean, say I just, goodbye. I mean, it's 
2023 just, Hyundai Tucson Limited. I don't want to just give it to anyone. I would say goodbye. I mean, does that person actually deserve the, the heated second we row seats? We don't know anything about who's going to win this car. What if car? a baby wins the car? Like a little, little baby. Yes, that, <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah, I mean, they, they can't try. Somebody. It's not going to happen. Okay, fine. Do you guys really think we would have gone out, bought a brand new car? Yeah. Spent all this money on uh, the camera. Yeah, we couldn't do it. It looks too good. No. Hyundai, we got the voiceover, got everything. So this is it. It's not a bit. It's real. We can't, I don't think, officially announce it. But here's what I want to tell you. If you have those DVRs and you love to uh, watch DVR TV or you want to watch TV at home, next Friday, uh, go turn on The Talk. That's a show that Jerry O'Connell is on. And I will be on The Talk talking about this. I already taped it. Um, but, uh, it was so fun to go on Jerry's show to talk about this show and talk about Jerry's appearances on this show. Um, and then, uh, and now I like this, like, what do you think here? We've gone too real. Gallantown. We'll see you right here next Friday and Saturday at, uh, six to 8 PM Pacific and Pacific time. Pacific. Don't mess around. We're, we're not messing around. Now, yeah, yeah, I know. Now we're, we both protest too much. But, you know, let's get back into the actual show. Uh, Molly, right. you'll be there. Will you be on camera? Will you allow yourself to be on camera next week? Oh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Right, um, I mean, I have a writer. Yes, I know. Your um, writer is very extensive. Yes. And it has nothing to do with, like, hair, makeup, wardrobe, any of that. I just, like, want some really... You want a lot of stuff. A yeah, lot of, yeah, yeah. You know what sucks is I'm the one that has to go out and get all of it anyway. Yeah. But I know, <laughs> but you know what, but you are, you know, we, that's a line item now, by the way, somebody brought up this, um, uh, where is this, uh, there's going to be a million people watching. Yeah, there is. What we are predicting is 1.5 million people will be watching this. 1.5 million people are trusting. Well, I should say Hyundai is trusting Rob and I to do a show for 1.5 million people people now yes am i good at stealing cars yeah but that has nothing to do with this um this is crazy this is, is crazy rob, and this gonna is, be there? rob is coming back from uh canada okay. oh. uh coming back from the dead yes coming back from the dead he will rise uh the day of uh mm -hmm. and now because my movie got pushed Mm -hmm. um, I will also be coming from set but don't worry the show must go on we will do the show it will be great Hollywood. I can't even tell you what the movie I'm doing is Really? Uh, because I've not been in any of the uh, the leaked footage from the star and director of the movie. They released a little piece online mm -hmm. the other day uh, that was actually very fun. Uh, but I wasn't in that scene. Well, I was in that scene, but I was off. I don't know. I don't like to jump in uh, to somebody else's social media vids. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm doing. All right. But um, Molly, I'm going to talk to you before we leave the show. But okay, I want to I want to do one more thing here. Okay, great. I'm going to pop out. So you call me if you need me. I've got my bumper ready to go. You got it. All right, perfect. Uh, as people pointed out, yes, 1.5 million people will be smaller than the regular stream, but that's because of the odd hours that we're doing it. Uh, is June being let out of the basement? Here's the thing. June will be a part of the show, but not in the way that you expect. I don't think. Or maybe she will. I don't know. We haven't talked about it that much. I have an idea for June that will make her a very big part of the show. But again, we're going we're gonna to figure it out. There's some things that are question marks. But I know that you don't tune into the show just for announcements, just for hearing about how you could win a Hyundai Tucson. Uh, you tune in because you want some good gift ideas. And I saw a commercial. This commercial might be the best toy commercial of all time uh pop it in molly again star wars themed All right, I've been sitting on this commercial for the longest time because I didn't know what to do with it. This is a Kylo Ren helmet that you can purchase for your kid. And when the kid puts it on, all he does is scream because I guess like Kylo Ren doesn't really have a catchphrase. It's just agony. Like Kylo Ren's, Kylo Ren's only like discernible catchphrase is like, ah, I'm mad. Ah, watch it again. This is one of the best, like they clearly are like, well, he doesn't have a line. He's angry, I guess. Check it out. Ah, ah. 
when that's the toy, I guess it does change your voice, but all it does is like the red gets brighter when you scream. But to me, this is the be- like this is the reason that people have problems with Star Wars. Honestly, like could you imagine if like the only like if Darth Vader's only tagline was like no it, there is not like they couldn't figure out anything cool for this kid to say like oh yeah Kylo Ren's uh famous uh catchphrase is just righteous anger or or you know it's basically this helmet is like old man yells at sky one more time i got to watch it one more time Sorry. And, and what I love about it too is that it is two levels. It's like, ah, ah. It's like, <laughs> oh, what a shitty toy. Uh, I love shitty toys. Please send me your shitty toys. Uh, my mom has a great tendency to buy shitty toys because she lives in a mall and um, there's all these vendors out there that sell toys that look like toys that kids would want but they don't want because they're not good. Um, Holy shit, please buy that. Somebody buy that. I wonder if we could actually, if I bought that, could I bring that to the Hyundai show? Probably not. Although I am giving away an amazing thing from uh, Sideshow, which makes these amazing collectibles. And uh, it's this one thing that June has told me I have to get out of the house. So uh, there's going to be a lot of fun stuff that I'm giving away. Uh, but I do want to talk uh, right now about the binge to a merry binge miss. Uh, if you don't know about this, uh, the binge is a movie. Molly, can you pull up a poster for it? The binge is uh, a movie where it's basically a parody of The Purge. In The Purge, there's one day a year in which... All violence is legal. You can do whatever you want with no consequences. So the binge takes that premise. It's a, in the in the future. All liquor and drugs have been outlawed. But one day a year, you can get as fucked up as you want with no consequences. And that is the binge. Now, the binge was so successful in its first run that Hulu is like, we need to make another one. Can you make the binge a Christmas movie, and this is how they came up with uh, It's a Merry Bingemas, uh, and this is all about how they move the binge to Christmas Eve. Nick Swartzen's in it. Uh, you have Tim Meadows. You have Danny Trejo. You have uh, some great actors. Uh, as a matter of fact, you have, uh, I'm going to forget everybody's name, you have Tony Cavallero, uh, who plays one of my favorite characters in the entire thing. Uh, you also have, I don't know if you've seen the great TV show She-Hulk, uh, but let me remind myself of her name, and I'm going to tell you what it is, and I feel terrible for this moment of uh, just forgetfulness. Um, I know her uh, I know her, her Instagram handle. Uh, her name is Patricia. Oh, Patty. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pretend like I, I'm going to say, all right, great. You got uh, from She-Hulk, Patty Guggenheim, who just like scene stole She-Hulk. She's in it, uh, and I am in it. Uh, I play this character called uh, Soup Anderson. I'm a local news reporter, and the entire time in the movie, I am trying to do a news report, but everyone is super drunk and super high and interrupting my news report. And I believe I have one of the best uh, taglines when I'm out uh, and about reporting on the binge miss. It just basically says... Um, they've come to eat ass. My mom will be so proud. Uh, but here I am uh, with uh, Swartzen, the director and writer, Jordan Vandina. Jordan Vandina, a uh, great dude that I know. Uh, he actually started doing these things called weekend scripts. He'd write a script in a weekend. The guy it can just pump out Really funny scripts very, very quickly. Uh, whatever the incident is, you can go to weekendscripts.com. You can check out his other stuff. But here's the thing I wanted to talk about. 
when we were shooting uh, the binge, we were shooting it up in Syracuse. And um, in Syracuse, they have this whole kind of production arm up there. Jeremy Gerlich, who you know has directed uh, some great uh, movies. Jeremy Gerlich has started like a whole production entity up in Syracuse. And the city is so awesome. The production company is called American High. They do all these great movies. They just did that Patton Oswalt movie. Uh, they did a Natalie Morales movie. They've been behind a lot of great uh movies with a bunch of younger actors and the town is so excited that we're there they treat us so well it was one of the best experiences being up in syracuse but we were shooting this last march i think it was super cold it was in syracuse and they had decorated this courthouse to be like full-on christmas celebration and what was happening in town was there was and i'm sad to say um someone who was being tried for murder and was uh, being put to death. Uh, it was a terrible case. Or So you know what? I'm going to – I don't think they could be put to death in New York. Is New York a, uh, a state where they allow executions? Let's see. Do we know it? I don't know. So there's a really terrible case going on, a lawsuit that's taking over – all the newspapers in Syracuse about a really violent crime. And uh, and on the cover of the newspaper, when this man was convicted uh, of, of murder, they have him on the courthouse steps with all this Christmas decorations around because they just they, – we were shooting in the town square. So it was like the middle of March – a murderer is convicted and everyone's on the courthouse steps and it's like so ridiculously festive and for the wrong time of year. But because it's a news story, they have to cover it. And it made it like it was one of the funniest headlines to see. It's like very serious case, fully decked out as Christmas. Like it was a fucking bonanza. They had everything there. Uh, so this person was convicted of murder and in the beautiful set that we have right here. Uh, but I think uh, people love Binge. I think the Binge one is really fun. Vince Vaughn is great in it. And this one is uh, is equally good. As you can see, some of the set deck I took a picture of there. Uh, it is a lot of drugs. Caitlin Olsen is uh, great in the movie. Uh, she's also in the movie. So they, like, it's like uh, it, it's literally just... Heavy hitters from your favorite shows. Uh, Stevie from Eastbound and Down is in it. Uh, it's it's a great, uh, fun, fun movie. And it premieres tonight on Hulu. So it's free. There's nothing yeah, nothing to do. So it's an adult Christmas movie that you can actually uh, not enjoy with your children if you have children. Uh, and uh, yes, you're right. The most horrible crime of the year. Um, let's see. Do I want to talk about anything else? Oh, maybe we'll just get out on this because uh, I had to do a short show. My kids are downstairs. I can hear things banging already. Um, okay. Let's do this. Um, you know what? We've had a lot of fun here tonight. We've made some big announcements. We've looked at holiday toys. We have looked at the future of uh, the legal world. We've looked at uh, the future of your holiday films. But you know what? While it's important to promote the binge, and what the binge is saying is it's okay to do drugs. It's okay to, you know, get fucked up. I think I must air this disclaimer. Oh, hold on one second. One second. Sometime and next week, forget it. Next week, we're going to have this on a lock. Here we go. Ooh, I'm talking about drugs. Oh, hold on one second. You know what, Molly? I want to say this. Can you actually play the Super Mario theme first? Okay, so for those of you who don't know, uh, my kids love this show, but there is a Super Mario show. It's part live action and part uh, cartoon, and it has one of the best theme songs of all time. Uh, check it out. Check it out right here. That is the Super Mario Brothers theme. My kids love that show. It is wildly uh, inappropriate and uh, vaguely racist. Because uh, it's like Don Rickles. It makes fun of everything in the most stereotypical ways. Uh, a lot of pasta puns, but also a lot of other stereotypical puns that you're like, ooh. Uh, some attitudes that probably don't age very well as I hear it uh, playing in my car because I put that DVD in. Uh, I'm like, eh, maybe we should 
pull that one out. Uh, but anyway, because of the binge and because people might be getting drunk for the holiday, you know, this holiday season, you might want to get a little bit drunker. You might want to, you know, smoke some weed to relax. But right now, I want to give you a very special message to hopefully dissuade you from doing that. I'm Captain Lou Elbano talking to you about drugs. Kids, don't be afraid to say no. Anyone that asks you to use drugs is not your friend. Drugs can and will kill. Remember, don't be afraid to turn to your priest, your rabbi, your minister, your moms, your dads, your teachers, because drugs can kill. And if you do Pause drugs, it. you go to hell before you... Oh, wait. Hold on. Rewind it. All right. <laughs> wait a minute. Just, just a little bit. So say, so far, so good. Kids, don't do drugs. Now, play the end. Go to hell before you die. Go back just a little bit more, Molly. I fucked it up. Here you go. Do drugs, you go to hell before you die. What the fuck? You go to hell before you die. So you go to hell before you die. Like it's like a very simple commercial. Hey, everybody, don't do drugs. He does list a, a, a tremendous amount of religious personnel. Uh, go to your mother, your father, your priest, your minister, your rabbi. Okay, sure, a lot of that, and we think it's going to be over. But no, he then says, you're going to go to hell. This is for kids. One more time, just say that. Here we go. He teaches because drugs can kill. And if you do drugs, you go to hell before you die. Please. Please, please, he begs of you. And they're like, hey, you know what, Lou? Can we maybe like, uh, can we maybe cut out the hell part? He's like, no, I want to I wanna tell kids that they're going to go to hell before they die. They're not going to die and go to hell. They're going to live in a hellscape and then die. Like, it, that is more affecting than this is your brain on drugs. Whenever I see a man dressed as Mario Mario, that's his name, telling me that I'm going to go to hell, I believe it. That that is more. That's the most effective PSA. Like a man dressed like that to take a moment out of his busy schedule to tell you you're gonna go to hell. And by the way, I love that they didn't take him out of costume. And that's not his attitude. And they're like, "Hey, Paisano, if you uh, smoke a weed, you're gonna die from AIDS because you used a needle that you shouldn't have used." Hey, it's time for Super Mario Party. It's a it, it's too intense. Mr. T pitied the fool. Super Mario threatened you to go to hell. We were in some weird shit in the 80s, people. All right, so next week tune in on Friday and Saturday. We might even pop the stream on live on Thursday during tech rehearsal so you can get a little sneak peek of what we're up to, test out some of the functionality of what we're doing. I don't know if we're allowed to do that. We'll see. We're going to play it by ear. But next Thursday, I will be in rehearsals uh, for the launch of this big show on Friday and Saturday. Mark your calendars. Get into the Discord because on the Discord, we are going to really – uh, need your help because the only thing that we can really air is user submitted things, things that we have the rights to. Uh, so it will be on friend zone. You don't have to go anywhere differently. It will be friend zone, but the discord is where I know I can get the riffraff out. I know that you are all the true, the true bloods. Uh, so I want to keep you all in there. I want to keep you involved. Um, we can't wait. Rob Hubel, myself, Eva Anderson, Celebrity Yard Sale, produced by Molly Reynolds. And we're going to get to see Molly on camera as well. And uh, hopefully, hopefully Rob gets back from Canada. I mean, if I have to host this thing by myself, I'll be nervous. Thanks so much for watching Thursdays with Rob and Paul. We are back. And next week, December 16th and 17th, we want you to be tuning in to Friend Zone to watch a very special big star-studded event where you get a chance to win a car. Just make sure you tune in to twitch.tv slash friendzone to get your chance to win. And if you like what you're watching here on YouTube, please make sure that you uh, like, subscribe, do all the things that you do on social media. We'll see you next time for another Thursdays with Robin Paul.